Well, does anyone have a, a suggestion or request for today? Or should we just ramble? <laughs> Um, well, we have Sierra joining for the first time, um, and it sounds like she's she's relatively new to the teachings of Krishna consciousness. So, so maybe we can say something, um, you know, as a as a as a seeker in this line. Um, do you have any? Is there anything in particular? Um, you you said you know something about Krishna. Um, are you are you attracted to the idea of Krishna as God? Um, is there maybe you could share something that that attracts you to these teachings? Okay, yeah. Um, I was doing like breath breath work and things earlier this year, so that was helping me with um, a lot of my human struggles, and um, you know have found my you know, found, I guess, what God is to me, but not like I haven't been able to like reach it because I know it has to do with my, my voice. And so feeling cut off from my voice has been really detrimental to my source connection, which I feel like I felt naturally when I was young, because I was singing and I was, um, you know, taking care of myself in those ways. In that regard, even if things were chaotic growing up, I still, had that space to feel into my heart and to share it with others. Mm -hmm. And so um, now I'm like in the space of like wanting to even start a business to help people with opening up to singing and uh, to creating and just being like mm -hmm. in my childlike sense and, and doing that with others. Um, but I'm running into like being vulnerable and I know it has a lot to do with my connection with God. And so I know I've kind of really struggled because I know that it has to do with my voice. So just finding, uh, you know, finding, uh, meeting, um, I don't know how to say her name now that I know her, her actual, you know, name. Um, but yeah, meeting Shannon through this group, I'm, I'm starting a business, she's starting a business and I met her through this group. And so basically just meeting her has brought me here. And that's really wonderful to me because I feel like I've been following bread, breadcrumbs, I guess, to my heart to like, what could actually mm. help my heart open up fully again to trusting. Um, so it was a traumatic thing that happened to me. I was, um, I was on a homecoming court. So like on my, when everybody noticed me and I grew up poor. So when everybody noticed me in my community and I was on homecoming court that night and displayed myself beautifully in this dress and all these things. And I went out that night and I was uh, taken advantage of by two men. And I called it that uh, for the longest time, but then later on told my, my friend that I was raped. So that cut me off from feeling I could be vulnerable and use my voice and show up. And so I need, I need a healing modality that will allow me to get to my voice. Um, mm. Yeah, so it's, it's really deep um, as to why, you know, I'm here. And I mm. really think that, you know, that falling, if falling basically into this practice is going to be uh, really, really, really important to me. So I'm thankful that you know, she got a hold of me because it's like, she told me about this and just happened because like, you know, it's, it's to the point where it's like, I, I want to be in that space so bad that it feels like I don't want to exist because I can't sing. Um, I can sing, but truthfully from my heart, not my ego, truthfully from that space of God that I've been, you know, struggling with, you know, the whole thing of why God, you know, why, why did this happen to me? all of that um, and coming back from being so hurt to a space of feeling empowered, which is what this program I'm actually in is about for the business and then to be able to help people. So it's really important that I learn, I guess, this right now without all the pressure because it's not about the pressure. I've just had a lot on me, it feels. Um, but to find that space in my heart so I can um, share that with others because I know it's my purpose to sing and I know it's my purpose mm. to to be alive and so to to get back to feeling like I can be alive and I can share my heart energy without being scared of 
you know, finally being seen and then like, you know, scared that because I was at my height, you know, I felt like I was on cloud nine that day. So if I do this business and I, and I am successful and I do help people, that is the scariest thing to me right now because it's, I'm scared that something will happen to me. And maybe that is, you know, obviously like a false belief fear. Um, I can recognize all of that, but yet still these programs, you know, run, run deep in me. So this practice is, uh, I think, going to really help me and knowing that there's a community 45 minutes, like near where I was born, just knowing that she had shared that with me, I can go to, looks like Thursday nights, they have it from 6.30 to 8.30 for the public. So uh, I just found that out. And so I'm, I'm excited to, um, you know, take, to be a part of community and uh, to sing again with people mm -hmm. and to share mm -hmm. that. Hmm. Thank you. Well, we feel privileged that you've opened your heart to us. And I know everyone here in, in the group is sending their love and well wishes to you. Um, wishing you all the best. Um, and uh, from what, what I've heard you say, I, I, I'll just share some things that come to mind. Um, and I, I hope you'll find them pertinent in, in some way. Um, well, um, firstly, I, I can say, you know, that, you know, you've, you've faced some, some difficult, you faced difficulties. And, and I, I actually, the connection was not so good. I couldn't catch everything that you said. Um, but but one of the main things you've expressed, I think, is that you've had you haven't been able to express yourself through the medium of singing as you used to. Um, and I well, what I can say about that is that you know in the practice of bhakti, in the practice of bhakti, in the practice of devotion, or in our attempts to open our hearts to the Lord, to Lord Krishna, then surrender is one of the most fundamental elements of our development. And so those, you know, we've all faced different challenges like that, you know, I mean, like for myself, I had to spend six months in bed at one time, you know, wasn't able to walk and, and, and other, other, you know, challenges like that I face, they've, they've helped me to come to a deeper um, degree of surrender, a deeper, you know, realizing our vulnerability and, and embracing that and, and taking that as, a, as an opportunity to take a deeper level of shelter. You know, it, those those moments that we face, they 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 help to remove the coverings of our of our false ego. You know, no, our our heart naturally is very beautiful, and our heart wants to run towards the Lord. Our heart naturally wants to reciprocate in love with all of the environment, but in this world that we find ourselves in now, you know, we inevitably become covered by different layers of material consciousness. And, and so, and, and, you know, we identify with different material desires, we identify with different material elements of this world, and, you know, we identify with different attachments et cetera, et cetera. You know, we identify with our body, we identify with our minds, with the senses. And so these are all like coverings over the, that pure soul and pure consciousness within us. And so those periods when we are forced to confront our helplessness, they, they, help, they are actually very beneficial for us in a spiritual sense. They help us to, to look within and to, to take a deeper level of, of shelter. So that is the positive side of these, of these challenges that we face. And 
I mean, just from hearing you speak, we 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 all can hear your your open heart, you know. And 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 then I can also another thing that that um came to mind is is when I was hearing you speak is that one of the beautiful things about bhakti because there are different approaches to God, there are different approaches to Krishna, there are different methods. But what is very beautiful about the practice of bhakti is that it is it is it is all inclusive in the sense that that nothing is to be rejected, but it is it is a, it is about utilizing and connecting everything. So I think it's it's very beautiful that you have this affinity for 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 song and for using your voice and. And that is something that that can be, you know, very wonderfully offered in the mood of service to to divinity, to the Lord. Um, and and that is something very um, special in the current time, because kirtan is recommended as the highest method of God realization and self realization within this current time in um, the the scriptures, the ancient Vedic scriptures of India, they describe how the the universe moves in a cycle of four different ages. And for each of these ages, there is a particular, you may have already heard this, um, but each of these, for each of these ages, according to the mentality of, of persons, the nature of the society, environment, there's a particular practice which is recommended as the best, most suitable. And in this particular age, it is called the age of Kali, Kali Yuga, or, or Kali comes from the word Kalaha, which means quarrel. And so it is known as the age of quarrel. <laughs> Um, which, you know, nobody's going to argue about that. <laughs> Something that we see very prominently nowadays. Um, because it is such a difficult time, it is an age of quarrel, hypocrisy, cheating. It is an age of so much contamination, you know, pollution, distraction. You know, the senses are very strong. So it's very difficult to engage in in um in serious spiritual practice and so for that reason um the practice of kirtan chanting singing is prescribed as the highest means of of spiritual development um so so there's a special potency which is invested in this practice of of chanting calling upon the names of of god and expressing our hearts and in through the medium of song, so so I, I think it's uh, I think you you're you're blessed that you have that that gift, um, and we hope that you'll be able to to realize that in the in the practice of of kirtan, and it, it is something very natural actually. Our our my spirit our spiritual master. Um, Shula Govindamai, she used to point out how, how we see through all the different faiths in the worlds, you know, they, they all have some, some element of, of, um, of chanting or calling upon God's names, you know. You know, we see that in Christianity and Islam and Buddhism, you know, so there we see that there is, you know, there's some universal recognition of the of the potency that is there but in the in the vedic tradition we find it it is it is something much more developed and more um you know more more pervasive so so it is it is beautiful that you you have an attraction and you have an affinity for that that mode of of expression you know and we're we're happy that you're inspired to, <laughs> to to join us, and you are seeking into our 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 faith. 
And this um, practice of kirtan, it was widely spread by an avatar of Krishna who appeared in India about 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya. You may have heard about him. And Lord Chaitanya is another form of Krishna who came to this world in order to teach the souls how to become a devotee of God, you know, which is very kind because if God comes as God, there's only so much he can say or do. But if God comes as a devotee of God, then he can demonstrate what, what we can do, what is, you know, what is the best way to approach the Lord. You know. And Lord Chaitanya, he, he appeared, as I said, about 500 years ago, and he appeared in a very beautiful golden form, and he, he traveled throughout India, spreading this practice of his, his two principal um, uh, the two main things that he was distributing were um, was the uh, kirtan, the chanting, and and prema, divine love. You know, so he spread prema, divine love, as the highest attainment, the highest object of life, and he spread kirtan as the highest chanting, as the highest means to to attain that. So kirtan and prema. You know, we we can say that. That what we are about can be condensed into these two, two things. And actually, he was very sometimes, um, in it, you know, there are, there are different perspectives on on Lord Chaitanya, and there are some there are some persons who who even, who will say that he's a socialist or or a communist <laughs> because he was very revolutionary for his time you know we, we see those as very very limited designations you know he he was he came with a very high spiritual purpose far beyond any designation of this world but because he because he didn't consider um you know social position or or anything like they didn't consider the background or social status of persons in his distribution and he was you know fully um embracing of everyone you know then for that reason you know some persons um they see him in, in that way as some type of social <laughs> revolutionary but that that's not the case he was simply seeing everyone as a spirit soul and and um and that you know we all have this you know although in a material sense we are divided in so many different ways you know um you know by our by our race our nationality our economic status education job intelligence attractiveness <laughs> etc cetera, etc cetera. in a material sense we can come up with with millions and millions of differences <laughs> between ourselves you know but these are all actually superficial and and in a spiritual sense we are all you know of the same stuff you know we can say you know, our um uh, you may have heard of vivekananda he's he's fairly well known and we we don't subscribe to his teachings at all we have a very different conception from him but but he gave a famous speech once um I think it was at Chicago University. It was some type of gathering of different religious heads, something like that. And he gave this famous speech and he started out by saying, oh, my brothers and sisters of America. And he completely captured everyone's heart at that moment because he was there, you know, as in, and this, this I think it, this was like at the beginning, I don't know, 1930 something or something like that. So to have an Indian man there would have been something very unusual and everyone would have been looking at him like a foreigner like a very you know not just a foreigner but like an alien you know, like like a very very different an outsider and so he he just astonished and charmed everyone by starting his speech you know my brothers and sisters of america pointing out that that in a spiritual sense we are all brothers and sisters we are we are all family we are we are all coming from the same spiritual source. So that was the that was Lord 
Chaitanya's vision, you know, and we all have, we all come from the same spiritual source. We all have the same spiritual destination. Um, and we all have, we all have that, that innate potential to, to realize love for, for, for Lord Krishna. And one, there's one beautiful verse of Lord Chaitanya's, which is a well-known verse, Naham vipro na chanarapatir na pivaisho na sujo naham varani na chagrihapatir no vanastogatir va kintu prodyan nikila parmananda pornamrita abder gopi bartu padakamal yor das, a das and a das. And he's in this verse, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's He's listing the different, you may, you may or may not be familiar with the Varnashrama system, the social religious system of India. Um, um, and, you know, there are different, um, different social and religious designations and there. Um, and so in this verse, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's listing each of these and saying, I'm not that, you know, I'm not a Brahmin you know, like a spiritual scholar. I'm not a, a household man, uh, uh, you know, a husband, a family man. I am not a, I am not a, a student or a renunciant student. Um, and I, and I am not a, I am not a, a worker, you could say, you know, and, uh, uh, or a kshetriya, is like a, like a warrior or ruler, like that. He's going through different different um, designations in the social system, and he's rejecting them all, you know. And and in a you know we can also transfer that to our context and say you know I'm not I'm not rich, I'm not poor, I'm not a, a teacher or mother or father or female or male or or beautiful or ugly or fat or thin or whatever it may be or stupid or intelligent no i'm not any of those things you know but kintu prodyan nikila parmananda purnamita there gopi bartu para kamala your das das and das i only identify myself as being the servant of the servant of the beautiful lord of of vrindavan you know lord krishna that beautiful all attractive lord of, of Braja, the beautiful land of Vrindavan. I only identify myself in that way. And, and you know, then we can say, you know, well, why Krishna? <laughs> why is he worshiping Krishna? Why are we saying Krishna? You know, there, there are many ways in which the divinity may be described or referred to or called upon. So why are we saying, why are we limiting, why are we limiting it to, to Krishna, you know? And, and our answer to that is that, yes, you know, the absolute, the divinity, or whatever word somebody wants to use, you know, God, the divine, you know, he can be known, can, he can be known in many different ways by many different names, and they are all valid, they all have they all have their, their validity. They all have their authentic um, position. You know, we, don't, we don't deny that. You know? And this is one of the things which, which is very special about the Vedic literature um, in that it is a very comprehensive body of knowledge. It is, there's, there's no touch of narrow-mindedness at all, you know, but but you know everything, every every conception is is accommodated there. There is one there is one German scholar, was it Max Muller? I can't remember. Maybe, but he made this. He was um, like a scholar, philosopher, like that. But he he studied the the Vedas, or at least a part of them, and he made this comment that that one drop of the Upanishads, and the Upanishads are just one section of the, of the, of the Vedic literature, just one part. 
um, they said one, one, one drop of the Upanishads can feed the whole world. You know, that persons of all religious inclinations, they will find something to satisfy them there. Nothing, nothing will be missing. You know, nothing, you know, everyone will find something there to, to, to feel, to fulfill their heart, you know, to fulfill their, their need. So there's, there's so much there. It is so comprehensive. Um, and so we find, you know, you know, for we find, you know, our perspective is that the Vedas, they are the origin, you know, of, of all spiritual truth that is found in the world. Um, so, so, you know, so every conception can be acknowledged there. However, there, there are also degrees, you know, there is also a, a great and and you know and that that is what we want to to appreciate. You know, we we acknowledge the validity of all faiths, but we also do not want to deny that there there is some gradation there. You know, just like um, in a in a school, you know, there's class one, there's class two, there's class three, class four, etc. You know, every class has its has its place and its purpose, but there's also there are also degrees there. There is also a gradation, and 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 then we can also say, we can also think of the nature of relationships. You know, you know, if we think of relationships in our own lives, there are degrees, right, of closeness, of intimacy, and there are those we may have many, many different relationships, but they are not all the same. You know, they are all they all have some some um some particular uniqueness to them and there and we can also value them in terms of degree of intimacy and how close they are to our heart you know and so in the same way you know we our 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 perspective is that you know, the supreme the divine can be known in many ways by many names but we choose to call upon him and the name which refers to his his sweetest <laughs> his sweetest expression his most loving expression the expression in which the closest approach of the finite is made possible and the the very name krishna it means it refers to his 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 power of attraction you know to his his attractiveness to Krishna, to uh, Krish comes from a karshan, which means to attract, and na from ananda, which means. And so our, our Gurudev explains, Krishna means, you know, who, who can attract and who will give joy. And, and, this, is, and this, is the, this is what really distinguishes the worship of Krishna from the worship of, of other expressions of of the divinity that it is not there is no element at least in its purest form you know we are we are we ourselves are students you know we we don't pretend to have achieved anything in our current stage but we are simply appreciating these ideals and we are students we are learning and we are practicing you know so you know we don't pretend to have anything ourselves, but we are we are sharing what we've heard and expressing our appreciation for these things. Um, so what is one of the most um, you know what what really make one of the how can I say this properly? You know, but one of the most distinguishing elements of of Krishna consciousness or the worship of Krishna is that. In its highest expression, love for Krishna, it has it is so great that there is no consciousness even that he is God. You know, because love eclipses everything else. And the reason for that is because Krishna is simply so charming and so attractive. You know? So so the the so the companions of Krishna, devotees of Krishna, or whichever word we want to use they they worship krishna they love krishna they play with krishna 
and so on and so forth, simply because he is so beautiful <laughs> and he is so attractive that they can't help themselves. You know? So you know, they are irresistibly drawn to, to give themselves to him, you know, simply because he is so charming and irresistibly beautiful. So there is no, there is no um, consideration. There is no calculation. Oh, this is God. You know? So I should bow to him. Or I should sing to him or serve him or et cetera, et cetera. But simply, no, he's this person. I don't know who he is, but <laughs> he's so beautiful. He's so wonderful. I want to be with him. I want to stay with him, play with him, serve him, et cetera, et cetera. You know? This is the this is Krishna's nature, and and so Lord Krishna came to this world as Lord Chaitanya to broadcast this news, this happy news. You know that not only are you an eternal soul. You know this is one level of understanding. This is one piece of good news, and and many many spiritual traditions they stop there. That's kind of like the end of the road for them or they just don't know if there's anything more than that. They know you're not this body. They know that this world is not the end. They know that you are an eternal spiritual being. There are many paths who recognize that, but there are not, there are much few, fewer who know that there's something more beyond that. You know, Not only are you an eternal soul who's not just born to live and die in this temporary world, which is full of so much disappointment. Not only that, but there's a positive world. There's a positive eternal world. And that is the real goal of life. So this is also um, one of the special gifts of the teachings of Krishna consciousness and Srimad Bhagavatam, the main scripture um, where these teachings can be found. This is one of the main gifts, the, the promise of a positive life in eternity. It is not that we are that we are just to live life in a void. We are just to live in eternity in a in a passive state, you know, but there is an active and dynamic spiritual plane. And that is, you know, a, a, there is a there is an eternal plane where we will live in love, you know, where we will live to exchange love with our beloved Lord and, and all others who are, um, you know, we, and we will, we, will, we will serve harmoniously, you know, in congregation with others, you know, towards that central aim of serving our loving Lord. So deal of, of Krishna consciousness. And and you know these are these are all very very high things you know but you know these things can feel very far away from us but everything our 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 guru our spiritual teachers you know they they would emphasize that everything is living within consciousness and and even here and now in our present environment we can begin to take some steps towards that plane by trying to live, by trying to change our, our, our perspective on the environment, by trying, by trying to live in a spirit of, of giving, in a spirit of, of service. And by, by, you know, by doing that, you know, we, can, we, can, we can begin to experience some touch of that, that higher plane. You know. By trying to, you know, we don't have to change anything necessarily in our lives, but we can shift our consciousness and try to make everything that we do an offering to the center. There's a, there's a very helpful verse in Bhagavad Gita spoken by Lord Krishna. Yat karoshi yat ashnashi yat dadasi yat yat tapasya sikunteya tat karusha mad arpanam where Lord Krishna is telling his dear friend Arjuna, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you give away in charity, whatever sacrifice you make, just make everything an offering to me, you know, connect everything with me. 
And if you can do that, I promise you that you will come to me. So this is a, it's, it's a, it's an, it's a subtle shift in the sense that it's an, it's internal, but it is, it is revolutionary. It is radical. And if we can do that, you know, we will experience great change in our lives. You know, this, this world generally is, how can we say there, there are so many, there are so many signboards for the spirit of consumption, consumerism, exploitation, you know, self-establishment, you no. Know. But here, you know, these teachings are telling us just the opposite, you know, that you will gain by giving, you know, not by taking. You will gain, you will, you will gain and you will grow through giving, through service, through dedication, through sacrifice. You know. And, you know, actually, I was talking about this the other day with, um, with, with my mother, actually, you know, how actually now it, the world is ripe to hear these teachings because we're really seeing how the spirit of consumerism, it just gets us in trouble. <laughs> you know, we see how much, how much trouble the world is in today and and it's it's really a good opportunity for everyone to wake up and to to realize that that you know we can't we can't live like this you know it's not it's not sustainable you know people are all about sustainable living you know people are 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 considering you know this this other way of seeing things so we need to take that to the next level you know okay we can think of that within this world around us but we need to think beyond that also. You know, we need to think about who we are beyond just this body and this physical world around ourselves and try to find, you know, where is my place within eternity? You know, so it is a, you know, the world is really in a crisis nowadays, but we can take it as an opportunity for, for a wake up call, you know, to see that exploitation lands us nowhere. Srila Sridhar Maharaj, our, our grandfather guru, he, um, in one of our books, maybe Shannon or Chintamani, she'll share that book with you, Search for Sri Krishna. Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he, our grandfather guru, he's, he issues this challenge to the modern day scientists and He's saying, you know, you're so you're so proud, and and you know, you're you're saying you've achieved so many things, but you haven't been able to solve the main thing, which is death. You know, this is actually the first point that we could all die tomorrow. You know, and and not you know, it's not to be pessimistic or nihilistic, but like let's just be serious and face that fact. And then in a, in a, in a, in a, um, what's the word? In a, you know, in a progressive spirit, let's try to find the solution to that. No. So you haven't been able to, you've created so many great things in this world, but you haven't been able to solve this fundamental problem. Srila uh, Swami Marsh Prabhupada, um, he he commented when he visited New York. He 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 you know he observed how how they were building such big sky, and he was coming from India, right? And he came to New York City, and this is like 1965, and saw all these big skyscrapers. And he he commented, you know, you know they're building these. Big, you know, they're very busy on the objective side of things. They're building these big, big skyscrapers, but they're not thinking about who's going to live in those skyscrapers. You know, these skyscrapers, they will, they will stand for so many years. They will stand for long periods of time, but there's no consideration of the subjective side who will live in those buildings. So, so Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he, in, in search of Sri Krishna, he makes that comment. 
you know, that you haven't been able, they haven't been able to solve the biggest problem, um, which is death. And he also made this very, very, um, you know, sharp assessment saying that, that what, what is actually happening with all of, you know, this, you know, so scientific progress in the world, what it's actually doing, he says, it's, it's expanding the circumference of exploitation. <laughs> no, no. And, and, this, and this is something, you know, that people who are, who are you know, like, um, you know, aware in the, in the world of, in the, you know, in, 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 you know, environmentalism and so on, you know, this is something that, that you know, they're very sharp on, you know, I, I'm talking about like tracing back everything, you know, like, like the phones that we use, like what, what is the whole chain behind that? What type of chain of exploitation is behind that? Like how much blood, sweat, tears, labor, exploitation has gone into producing that, you know? And all of that equals karma, you know, all of that equals karma. So, and and uh, Shila Shudamarj also says there that that all of this will, will, will come back like a boomerang. You know, we will have to pay for that in the end. You know. So again, you know, not to be pessimistic or negative, but it's just about being serious and realizing like what, what's really going on in this world and, and trying to understand our real need, our real purpose and seeking out um, you know, our identity in a, in a positive world and an eternal positive world and trying to take some proactive steps towards that, you know. You know, we, we, can, we can understand that this world is not our real home and is not our final destination. And so we have to inquire into what is our real home? What is our real nature? And how can we move towards that? And Shula Shudamar, she also has um, discussed this in terms of, of um, um, how can I say, um, looking at, at, at the world, looking at, um, at, at different approaches um, to, to life um, with these three different um, how can I say categories, you know, of um, exploit. Uh, er, okay, I'll say it like this. He has discussed these three main modes of living in this world. Um, exploitation, renunciation, and dedication. This is one way in which we can approach this, this subject matter. You know? And this world for the most part is based on the spirit of exploitation. It, it is, I mean, it is, it is at the core of this world, you know, to the extent that it's actually unavoidable, you know, it's what this world is built on, you know, and even, even when we breathe, we're breathing in so many microbes and we're, we're disturbing them, you know, if we go to drink a cup of water, you know, we're creating disturbance for microscopic living entities, you know, so even if we, earnestly want to avoid it, we just can't, you know, because this world is built on it. Um, so this world, for the most part, is based on that spirit of exploitation, you know, that, that our life or our success is dependent on the life of others or on the, on the degradation of others. If we, if we go up, it means someone else is going down, you know. <laughs> If we get something, it means someone else is not getting it. No. So for the most part, that's what this world is, is based upon. And there's so much, um, you know, competition, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, the spirit of enjoyment, consumerism, all of these things. And then, then the second category, second mode of living, which is less common is the mode of renunciation, but it is also something that plays within us. You know, these are, these are actually like two sides of the same coin, the spirit of exploitation and the spirit of renunciation. 
acceptance, rejection, you know, like, dislike. Um, you know, we, we experience within ourselves if we've had too much excess of something, you know, like, like if we, if we like pig out, <laughs> have a giant chocolate cake, <laughs> then we want to go on a diet, right? Then we don't want to eat anything. We never want to see chocolate ever again. So in a, in a general sense, this is a tendency that plays within ourselves. Um, but it is also um, an approach taken by spiritual seekers also in a more developed way. You know, there is the consciousness that, you know, I understand and, and you know, paths like Buddhism and within the Vedic worlds, um, Mayavad, you know, Shankar charges teachings, they also fall in this category. The conception is that, you know, we can see that the spirit of enjoyment, the spirit of exploitation just gets us in trouble. You know, if we enjoy something, if we desire something, then we automatically invite the negative reaction to ourselves. So therefore, what's the solution? The solution is to negate everything. The solution is to reject enjoyment, to reject exploitation, to reject feeling, emotion, you know, love, desire, et cetera, et cetera. You know, because all of these things get us into trouble, because all of these things just bind us in so many reactions, material, negative material reactions, then the best thing that we could do is to, to reject them. You know, we have to, we, we must negate all of these things, you know. And, and their conception is to, to enter into a state of spiritual oneness. So, so these are, these are two approaches, two perspectives, you know, one is, the approach of individual interest, individual enjoyment, um, individual exploitation, being an aggressor to the environment. And then the second approach is to withdraw, to, to, to reject. No. But then there, is a, then there is a third school, the third line of thoughts. And that is the line of devotion, you know, bhakti, dedication. And, and, and from that perspective, you know, and we, we stand in that ring, <laughs> you know, the other two approaches are both unnatural, abnormal. To, to be an aggressor to the environment, to think only for our own self, because living living within consciousness of just our own self, putting ourselves at the center of our world as we do, then inevitably we are creating disturbance in the environment because we are all so many units, so many individual units. You know, there's 8 billion and something people in this world today, right? And every one of us has our own set of interests and likes and dislikes and views on the world. And of course, they're clashing with each other. You know, there's there's no unity. You know, person against person, group against group, society against society, nation against nation, and so on and so forth. There's so much conflict. It is it is inevitable because we are, we're all imposing our own set of interests on the environment. So we cannot help but be an aggressor. So and so that is um so that is unnatural. That is not a healthy way to live. That is not that is not what we call normal, you know, in the in the highest sense, in the absolute sense. And then and then the second group is also not normal, you know, to just reject the environment or to try to negate desire and feeling. That is also unnatural. That is not normal. So then what is the answer? The answer is to properly direct everything. That there's nothing wrong with desire. There's nothing wrong with feeling. There's nothing wrong with activity, et cetera, et cetera. There's nothing wrong with these things. There's nothing wrong with beauty. 
No. But what is wrong is when all of these things are, these feelings and desires, attachments are, are, are misdirected, you know, are self-centered. This is, this is the key point, you know, living in a, in a consciousness of self-centeredness. That is what creates the problem. So to live in consciousness of the universal interest, which means the Lord's sweet interest, to connect with the center and to direct these feelings, you know, direct attachment, direct love towards the center, towards the heart, towards the root of everything. That is the only normal, healthy, wholesome, happy way to live. You know. there's, a, there's, a, there's a beautiful verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, Yata Tador Mulani Shechanena, Tripyanti Tatskanda Bujopa Shakaha, Pranopaharak Chaya Tenjianam, Tataiva Savarhanam, Achute Ja. And, and it is making this point. You know, you know, it uses the example of a, of a tree. You know, and the tree is such a wonderful example in many ways. You know. But the point here is made that if you want to to nourish a tree, then you will give water to the root of the tree, you know, and you don't give water to the branches, the leaves, the flowers, the fruits, or anywhere else, but you give the water to the root, and from the roots, that water is spread everywhere. And similarly, when our body is weak or needs nourishment, then we, we take food through our mouth to our stomach. We don't put food in our ear, or eye, or nose, or anywhere else. And but from our stomach, the food will spread, the nutrients will spread throughout our body. So, so in the same way, you know, all of our feelings and desires, they are normal and natural, but we, are, we want to direct them um, to their, their natural um, um, destination. You know? We want to, to, to direct them to their real um, the real, real deserving object, you know, you know, we are, we are actually what we do is we seek the infinite within our finite environment. You know, we, we are, we are, you know, we, we, um, you know, we direct this search for pleasure upon very limited objects of this world, you know, you know, food, objects, um, other persons around us who have their, their own limitations. You know, we, we direct this, this, this hunger with this desire within ourselves upon so many things of this world which are not really worthy of, of such um, attention. You know, you know really that, that the real, I can't find the right word, the real natural, um, recipient of such feelings and desires can only be our sweet Lord. So I, I'll, I'll conclude with this beautiful expression in the Upanishads, Srinvantu Vishwe Amritasya Putra, that you are all children of nectar. <laughs> so don't allow yourselves to be satisfied with anything less than that. No. You must awake, arise, and seek out what is your true birthright. You know, it is your own wealth. It is your own inheritance. <laughs> it is waiting for you. So don't, don't settle. Don't settle for anything less. You know? um, and I'll just mention also, lastly, on a personal note to, to Sierra. She's opened her heart very beautifully to us this well, evening here, morning for you over there. Um, just uh, what you were saying about your your voice and your singing ability that I hope you're able as I said I couldn't hear perfectly well everything you said but it seems like you're having challenge you having some obstacles and being able to express yourself as you used to through through singing um, I'll, I'll just say that you know I, I hope you are able to to pick that up again. I hope all the obstacles are removed and you're able to express your heart in that way again. But at the same time, 
If that's not possible, remember your heart also has a voice. <laughs> and, and this, you know, we are not limited to, to physical, you know, verbal express, you know, what we can pronounce with our tongue, what we can see with these eyes, what we can smell with this nose, et cetera. We're not limited to that. You know, we are not limited to this finite body and the, and the capacity of this finite body. We are much more than that. And our, our soul has its own voice. <laughs> our soul has its own wings and capacity. And so, you know, as I said, I hope you are able to, to realize that, that, that desire and expression. But if not, you, know, you can take refuge of, of what is deeper within yourself. Okay, well, um, thank, you. thank you so much. I do have to go too, and I just want to say thank you so much for explaining all of this. And um, it feels like a deep truth that I have known my whole life, really. And I think that I've known that what happened to me was a blessing, but you know, watching it come like, like experiencing or creating the blessing that it is, and, and just like feeling into what that is and bringing finding that space has been really confusing because as you explain there's these different things and so it's like well if i desire things i have to let go of everything or this whole mind trip so to like come back into um not being tripped up by my mind and just in my heart just that alone has made me feel tremendously better in in just what you've shared so thank you so 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 much and thank you everyone and i'll thank be you back for joining us here. okay wonderful <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> okay. We, we we have Chintamani with us. We were seeing your beautiful form <laughs> this week. <laughs> and uh, Suvasani Didi has also joined us from Ireland. And also Ramananda Prabhu has joined us from San Jose. So very happy to have you all, to be here, to be here in your good company <laughs> today. Um, does anyone want to add anything, share anything, ask anything, or should we wrap it up for, for today? Sandhavat <laughs> Pushaka, I'm just uh, reporting in. This is Jayadev on the lurking in the phone, the hidden oh, phone. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I cool. Right away. Great. Yeah, yeah. Amazing talk. Thank you so much. Friend of us. Oh, thank you for always being here. <laughs> Jai Jai Dave. And where where are you now? Are you with Chintamani or you're in different places? We are both at what's called the Divine Grace Ashrama. And it it is a uh it's kind of like a, a dwaith in line, but the 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 main the monk here wants uh, people to bring, he wants practitioners of bhakti path to bring more bhakti to the temple. Even though he's, he's philosophically an Advaitin, his mood is very much that of, of bhakti. So he's wanting, he's, okay. we're kind of on, we're kind of contracted here to be part of the, uh, part of, to part of the, uh, kind of come and help fire that up for the community. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Sounds cool. As best we can. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. And so, yes, we're on the same side. Okay. So to be, to answer your question, we're on the same land of the ashram. And I think she's at a Wi-Fi okay. network. That's why she can be on Zoom. And I'm out at the van okay. where there is no Wi-Fi. Yeah, so I'm on a call because of that. Okay. I see. Yeah. Arizona, I'm seeing Kintamini said Sedona, Arizona. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I hope you can come here sometime. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing. And I'm really feeling like... Uh, I don't know if you believe in this type of thing, but that the land itself, that the 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 city, the, whatever you want to call it, this area is calling for some sort of bhakti center. There isn't one, like a you know. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, that's on. The, I feel it. I feel it. I feel like this Ooh. place needs one. So yeah. Okay, sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah right. I'm I'm so Dandavad. I'm so excited. We have Dandavat Chayade Prabhu and Chintamani Devi. I'm so excited. Also, we have Braja Mohini with us today. Do you want to share something, Didi? 
Um, I just super happy to, to see you and everyone. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been tuning in. I've just been in a different <laughs> situation, but um, yeah, we're just um, trying to, we've actually uh, got invited to do some kirtan with a, with a meditation group in Austin. So last night, mm -hmm. Sunday was our second week going and a uh, really sweet group of young people um, getting together. It's organized by um, this guy who's pretty new to, to meditation and everything, but he, he, he uh, was really happy to have us come and chant with the group uh, 10, mm -hmm. last week we chanted a little longer, but last night was maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, so we're just feeling like we're getting a chance to start to meet people. We've already met some people that want to come out here and and learn more about the center. And um, you know, we're kind of seeing how to how to go forward with maybe doing a, a regular. Well, for now, this is our regular program in Austin. You know, even though it's just kind of fitting in with another group, but it's it's fitting nicely. It's a really sweet way to to meet people and. Um, so we're kind of excited about that. Um, and then just seeing how to keep this going for right now. And hopefully you can come when, when the time is right, you can please come and visit and stay here with us for a little while. It'd be very nice. So. Oh, that all sounds very exciting. And you're there with um, Indu Leka and Krishna Nanda. They're there. Mm -hmm. And do like and Krishnananda, and um, she's she's going to be gone for a little while. She's going to go visit her mom. Um, but and there's a couple other people here at the moment that are helping with uh, Krishnananda's business. Um, but super nice people. Okay. And uh, yeah. So anyway, not a whole lot nice. more than that. That sounds. That sounds really exciting. <laughs> okay. Well, Shaka Didi, thank you so much for enlightening us. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us, Prabhu. We're always happy to have you with us. <laughs> Sorry, I was with the recruiter, so talking back and forth. <laughs> you, you, you definitely win the attendance award, Ramananda Prabhu. No, no, thank you. <laughs> you are our saving grace. You are the best. I'm so lucky, Guru, they gave you. Uh, Sanyas, he gave you, you are the Gurudev's weapon he, to deliver everybody. <laughs> now, I've been very blessed. I, Gurudev came to this house. He was so happy. He, Gurudev blessed us. Gurudev, mm -hmm. merciful. I was listening to Gurudev lecture. Somebody forwarded me. He said, everything is dying, so we have to save ourselves. Guru telling so nicely, but we can go in here, there, everywhere. <laughs> So I have one question, like uh, Mahaprabhu said, Jivera Sabrup hai Nitya Krishna Das. So how we know what's my duty for as a Krishna Das? What is our duty as Krishna Das? Yeah. <laughs> Many years I follow, I try to follow. I listen to Guru Maharaj, then I think I don't need anything. I am under his protection. It's good. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I, I know that Gurudev is taking care of you, Prabhu. You just have to continue. And you know, we we are we are trying to find our Gurudev's Gurudev's mood everywhere. We can learn something from everyone. So, you know, we can try to 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 see what what can be learned from all of the Vaishnavas. Maybe, maybe we cannot find someone who is like our Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj. But that doesn't mean that nobody has anything to give us. So we have to we ha we have to see what we can gain. You know, we are always students, and we can be a student. Gurudev mentioned, "I'm learning from the children." Also, <laughs> you know, the, I'm 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 learning from them. And a few times I heard him mention also. Sometimes I'm thinking about my disciples. No, I am. They are. They are my guru. I am their guru. You know, I. I am also learning from them. 
So this, this is a spiritual way to live, to whatever fault someone may have, they still have something to give us, something to teach us. So we have to try to live like that, you know, that is, a, that is spiritual consciousness. So we have to try to make that shift and change our, change our perspective, change our, change our approach. You know? we, we have to, to see that the Lord is with us and every moment there is an opportunity to go forward or forward. And ultimately we are responsible. You know, we cannot place any blame on the environment. Every moment is a positive moment because the Lord is always with us and nothing is happening without his sanction. So we have to simply take responsibility and be progressive and proactive in our approach. And then everything will change for us and we will, we will feel and experience everything in a very different way. Of course, it is easier said than done, but what is our life for but to try? You know, <laughs> we have to try. <laughs> There's nothing. That's what Gurudev said also. Gurudev is so merciful. There's so many ways he tried to encourage everybody, but yeah. Mm. Just, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I think I ran out of my tolerance. See, like Gurudev said, Tate no compound. See, like Guruma, I say, also tolerate. I was listening yesterday his lecture. He said, we are like an animal, cat, dog, or cow. <laughs> so I don't know what to think. I just pray and I'm so happy to be with you, your association. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sharing, Ramananda Prabhu. Thank you so much. My, my dandavat pranams to all of the beautiful Vaishnavas assembled. Wishing you all the best for the upcoming week and hoping we can continue to meet again and again. Jai Shlavati Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. All the assembled devotees Ki Jai. Jai Virgin Mohini Didi Ki Jai. Suvasani Didi Ki Jai. Itai Gor Permanande. Hari Vishaka Didi Ki Jai. All the assembled Ki Jai. Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Gorpe Manandi. Hey. Hey.